All right, hello everybody, and this will be the solution to question 20 from the senior section thing of the Australian Maths competition. So this was an eight marker question, so I assume it was a pretty hard question. But uh, yeah, this is my solution. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to solve it on the actual test because I kind of ran out of time, didn't have enough time to solve it, and had other stuff to do. Uh, but I did manage to solve it afterwards. So uh, yeah, here's my solution. So what exactly are we trying to find in this question right here? Well, we know we have some kind of triangular box with four faces, so I'm thinking of like a tetrahedron shape, kind of. But the thing is, we know three of those faces are at right angles to each other. So if you imagine kind of like the X, Y, Z axis, you can kind of like think about this corner right here. So three of the triangular faces are on those three planes, and we need to construct our final face somehow. So let's just pick three points on these axes and just connect them up like so. And then now we have a four-sided tetrahedron, not kind of box thing. And what other information are we given? We know that these lengths here of this last face, it has side lengths of 11, 20, and 21. So let's just put them in. Doesn't matter which order, 11, 21, and 20. Those are the three um, sides of that triangle then. So this is kind of like the shape we're given. And the question asked us to find the volume of this thing right here. And uh, that's pretty tricky to do actually, because well, you know the dimensions of this triangle face that's kind of like tilted on the side right here. And um, well, if you want to use the pyramid formula to find the volume, you would have to find like the distance, the length of the line that's perpendicular to this tilted plane right here. And that's just a disgusting way to do it. So a nicer way to do it is to use the information we have to find this length right here, this length, and also this height right here. And if we can do that, we can actually find the area of this little base thing. And then we also have the height right here. And then if we know that information, we can use the pyramid volume formula, which was like a third base times height or something like that. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's name these unknown quantities something. I'm just gonna call it I, J, and K. And how exactly can we relate these three quantities with the three numbers we already know? Well, first of all, let's take a look at this triangle right here. Notice that that's exactly a right angle triangle. Remember these three surfaces come together at right angles. So we can use Pythagoras' theorem on the first triangle to get I squared, so I squared plus K squared being equal to, well, this length squared, which is 20 squared. And then you see, we also have this other right angle triangle down here with, with side lengths, I, J, and 11. So we have also I squared plus J squared being equal to 11 squared. And finally, we have this triangle on the side here with side lengths J, K, and 21. So we're gonna get J squared plus K squared being equal to 21 squared. And you see the nice thing is we have three unknown quantities and we have three equations. So we can treat this as a systems of equations and we can quite easily solve this actually. So I think the best way to go around this is just by rearranging things a little bit. I think it's too tricky to do with the matrix. So first of all, let's try and isolate these i's somehow. Notice that we can bring this k squared onto the other side. So we're gonna have 20 minus k squared. What else can we do? Well, notice we have I squared on its own right here. And why not substitute this part into our second equation right here? So we're gonna have 20 squared minus K squared plus J squared. So this part being equal to 11 squared. Okay, what else can we do right here? Notice that this equation, it has only J's and K's in it. And we also have this third equation with J's and K's in it. So why not rearrange this third equation a little bit? Let's move the K onto the other side. So we're gonna have 21 squared minus K squared. So now we can substitute J squared for this junk right here. So we're gonna have 20 squared minus K squared. But, and then J squared is nothing but plus 21 squared minus K squared being equal to 11 squared. Okay, we can clean things up a little bit. And here we have negative K and negative K, that's negative 2K. And let's actually throw that onto the other side of the equation and bring this 11 squared over. So we're gonna have 20 squared plus 21 squared minus 11 squared being equal to 2K squared. Okay, what can we do from here? Let's actually evaluate these three values right here. So we're gonna have 20 squared, that's exactly 400. 21 squared, I don't know it from the top of my head, so let's just do some multiplication. So 21 times one, that's 21. 21 times two, that's 42. So one, four, four. So 441. 
And then 11 squared, that's exactly 121. So 121. Okay, let's do some arithmetic now. So 400 plus 441, that's 841. And then we're gonna subtract 121. That should be exactly 720. So all of this is 720. And then let's divide this by two. So now we're gonna get k squared being equal to 360. And now taking the square root, my side's positive square root because we're dealing with lengths right here. So let's see, what exactly can we do? 360, that's nothing but 36 times 10. So taking the square root, we're gonna get the k being equal to uh, six square root of 10. So k is six square root of 10. And you see, we've figured out one of those quantities right there. Now, all we have to really do is substitute it back into these two equations right here, because notice they both have k's in them, and then we can solve directly for i squared and j squared. So putting this junk into this first equation here, we're gonna get i squared being equal to 400 minus k squared, but that was 360. So 400 minus 360, that is exactly 40. And taking the square root, that would give us i being equal to two root 10. And doing for the same for j right here, 21 squared, that was 441. Minus k squared, we know that was 360. And uh, that should evaluate to 81. So we have j squared being equal to 81. So that means j is equal to nine. So we have j being equal to nine as well. So those are our three solutions for our three unknowns. And now we know um, our dimension of our pyramid. So now what we have to do, we have to find this area of the base right here. So that's just the triangle. So we just have to multiply J and I and divide it by two. So J times I, uh, that was 18 root 10 and then divided by two, that's nine root 10. So we have our base being nine root 10. And then now for our height, our height is K. And k is 6 root 10, so our height is 6 root 10. And now plugging this into the pyramid formula, we're going to get the total volume being equal to 1 third. Base is 9 root 10 times height, which is 6 root 10. And then overall, we're going to get, well, root 10 times root 10, that's 10. And then I'm going to get 9 times 6, which is 54, divided by 3 is 18. So we should get 180. So we have our total volume of our weird triangle shape right here being equal to 180. So yeah, that's my solution to this problem right here, even though I didn't do it on the actual exam. I think on the exam, uh, I, think, I guess like 846 or something, which was quite a bit off from 180, but uh, yeah, there you go.